Hey YouTube, it's Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, here with another Alesis Nitro Mesh video. Now today's video is going to be about how I recorded my song Taurus, which you might have seen on my channel. If you haven't seen it yet, you can check out a link down below. And the reason why I wanted to go through this, you know, basically step by step how I did it, is actually mostly just to show you guys uh, how to record the Alesis Nitro Mesh. And maybe you'll learn some other things in the process as well. Uh, but I keep getting a lot of questions about recording the Alesis Nitro Mesh, and there seems to be a little bit of confusion about how you connect the module to your computer to record it. So I figured I would go over all of that just to clear up any confusion some of you might be having, and uh, just so you can get up and running and recording your own songs using the Alesis Nitro Mesh. Now before we get started, I just wanted to mention that if you enjoy these kind of videos, please check out my record label, anthillrecordings.bandcamp.com. There'll be a link over in the sidebar area, wherever that is, and or down there. Links all over the place. But uh, what you could do there is actually become a VIP member, and if you do that, you'll get all of the music that has been released on the record label already. That's 67 releases in total, plus everything new that comes out in the future, as well as 15% off all physical merchandise, and that includes vinyl and CDs. So anyway, go ahead and check that out. Now on to the tutorial. Okay, first things first. Let's talk about how to actually connect your Alesis Nitro Mesh to your computer or to whatever you're recording with. Because uh, this is where we run into a lot of confusion, uh, it seems like, with a lot of the viewers. So, first off, let me just unplug everything out of the back here so I can explain what all these ports are. Okay. So, if we look at the back here on the back panel, we'll notice a USB... MIDI out and in, Tom 4, Crash 2, L mono and R outputs, and then an aux in. And then over here on the side, we have a phone's output, headphones. Okay, so to record audio from the Alesis Nitro Mesh module, like the sounds that you actually hear being made by the Alesis drum set, you're going to want to use the audio outputs, either the L alone, which is a mono signal, or both L and R for a stereo signal. Now the way to do that, well, the way I do it, there's several ways that you can do it, but the way I do it is I have a stereo, like a dual quarter inch cable here, and I just plug it into the left and right outputs, like so. And that runs, if we follow this cable down here, to my audio interface right here, which is a Behringer uh, UMC 404 HD. Now, you don't have to use this exact interface. There's a lot of different USB interfaces that you can get. Uh, let me show you another one real quick. Okay, so this is also an audio interface, and I use both of these. So I use this one set up here on my desktop computer, and then the other one I have over there by the drums, and then when I want to record my drums, I usually just plug my laptop in to that interface that's sitting over there. All right, so this is really the best way to record your drums, by using a USB audio interface. Now, the reason for that is, like, sure, there are sound cards and computers that you could run a cable uh, from the Alesis Nitro Mesh into the computer and record it that way using the built-in audio interface in the computer, rather. But the problem with that is a lot of times you have to use special adapters, a lot of them now have these combo headphone microphone jacks built in. And these are kind of a pain because number one, you're gonna to have to split that headphone and microphone jack using one adapter. And you're gonna to have to use a special cable from the Alesis Nitro Mesh that basically sends the two quarter inch cables out to one single eighth inch stereo cable. So it's a lot of adapting and it's just kind of a pain in the butt to do it that way. And plus your end results are really not going to be as good as if you just did it with a USB interface because the USB interface is gonna have a clean signal and it's basically made to record things like this. Now this is just talking about audio. Now if you're recording MIDI, this is something totally different. And this is when you would use the USB connection or the MIDI hardware connections on the back of the Alesis Nitro Mesh module. All right, I hope you guys got that. The best way to record it is by using a USB audio interface. Now I'll post some links down below that'll point you in the right direction. You don't have to buy the exact one that I have. Uh, but anything that has two or one even line input, if you want to record stereo, you'll need two inputs. 
Uh, but if you want to record just mono, you can have uh, just a single input will work. But most people probably want to do stereo and most audio interfaces, the minimum will be a stereo interface anyway, so. Okay, so now let's talk about how I actually go about recording a song and putting it all together myself. Now, for me, it can kind of vary sometimes, but what I'm gonna do is tell you about how I've been doing it recently. So what I'm gonna do is basically walk you through the whole process of how I recorded that song, Taurus. And it starts out basically on this computer over here on my desktop. So what I've been doing is actually using my guitar first and basically write the song on guitar. And then you can see over here, I have my amplifier mic'd up. That cable's going over here to my audio interface. I have my guitar going into there and then I'm using Ableton Live as my DAW. Now you can use just about any recording software to do this. You don't have to use Ableton Live. You can use Audacity, Pro Tools, uh, you know, whatever you have is fine. Okay, so let me go ahead and solo this first track. And then if I turn my click back on. This is how this started out. So basically, as you can tell, I'm just playing to a click. You know, some people when they record, they program a drum part first so they can, you know, have more of an idea of what it'll sound like. But to me, it's fine, you know, maybe because I'm already a drummer, so I don't really need to have all those, you know, programmed drums in there. I can kind of imagine what it will sound like already. So a click for me is good enough. So I write the guitar part first, and then, you know, I kind of arrange it. And this one actually, I did pretty straight through. I didn't really, the only part that you could see that I punched in a little bit was right here. Everything else was like one take all the way through. And uh, same with the second guitar track, except for that, that one got a little bit more complicated. I had, you know, a section that I did down here in the solo part, and then there's like two different leads going on. But so basically what I did is I first just went through and started creating some guitar parts and uh, put that whole part together on guitar first. I didn't have anything else. And then I went through and I added in my bass track, which is down here on the bottom. And again, almost played all the way through, except for where I messed up, I did a little punch in right here in the middle. Well, actually, no, that's not true. What I did there, now I remember, I actually, um, I recorded the whole thing, but I didn't have a bass part worked out yet for this solo section. And just so you guys can hear what section this is I'm talking about. That part right there. So I didn't have that worked out yet. So basically what I'll do sometimes is I'll do everything that I know how I'm gonna do it. And then I'll go back and I'll punch in the parts after I figure out what I'm gonna do and I'll punch them in later. Um, now down here, finally, after I finished all of those, Drums were actually the last thing I did. Now, a lot of people do it the opposite way. They start with drums, but to me, uh, I do them last because I want to have the whole song fit, you know, pretty much completed before I start recording the drums. So that way I can play the drums the best that I can to hit all the accents and do everything, you know, to match up what I was playing. Now, the drum part, when I actually recorded that, I didn't do it on this computer. I recorded it on my laptop which is actually down here underneath this audio interface. It's just folded up down there. But what I did is I, I just created a simple mix from this project. I just bounced down all the tracks into like a rough mix without drums. And then rather than transfer the whole project over to a different computer, um, I took that rough mix down and then I imported it into Ableton on that computer, set it up at the same tempo, and then recorded my drums and once I had the drums recorded, I just took the WAV file from there and then dropped it back in, in, into this project here and finished mixing it on this computer. Um, now that may be, a, it may seem a little bit confusing, but it's actually better that way because that way I can start and stop, you know, with the laptop right next to me. I don't have to run super long cables over to this computer or anything like that. So that's pretty much how I did it. Um, you know, this isn't really a mixing tutorial or anything like that. I'm not gonna go through any of that on here. I just wanted to show you the process. And that's my process, basically. Um, you know, there are other ways to do this, but this is how I do it. And the main thing you're just gonna need to remember is, you know, just to have an audio interface to record the drums or to record everything. You know, if you wanna record music on a computer, 
you're going to need an audio interface. I mean, I've made videos about, you know, showing people how they can get away with not having one and use the built-in sound card. And yeah, you can do that. But like I said, it's always, it's going to drive you crazy. Um, it always will. So it's best to just get one. And that's another thing too. Like audacity is cool and it's, you know, it does a lot for a free program, but there's certain things that it doesn't do like you can't select which audio input you're using on a certain track uh, which is really annoying um, so if you have nothing else audacity will work but if you can spend a hundred bucks you know get something like ableton live intro which is what i have here or a cubase elements you know a lot of the most popular daws have kind of like a light version which really in all honesty are pretty much more than adequate for most musicians. Um, I use Ableton Live Intro, which is like the cheapest version of Ableton Live. And for me, it's actually just great. Like I, I really don't find any problem with it or think that anything is missing that I absolutely need. You know, it's a little bit lacking on buses and things like that, but I mean, I can get great sounding mixes out of it and I'm always very happy with it. And I just like the ease of use in Ableton. And plus it has this whole clips feature and everything that really I'm not even talking about. Like how I'm using it right here is basically more like a standard, you know, computer recording software. But a lot of people use Ableton to make electronic music, which it is very good at doing. And so it's very nice to be able to switch back and forth. And I think as a one, you know, one size fits all DAW, I think Ableton's probably the best because it's just so flexible and can do so much. But like I said, there are many, many uh, DAWs out there. I always used to really, really like Cubase and I used to use that one pretty much all the time until, um, I don't know, maybe 2015, somewhere around there, until my version was just so old it wouldn't run on any computers anymore. And so I was like, well, maybe I should get uh, Ableton Live and check that out. And so I've been using Ableton pretty much since then. But I do know uh, Cubase has a very inexpensive version as well. And of course, there's all the Linux users who have a lot of free software that you can use, you know, like Ardor and uh, QTractor and all of things that I've made tutorials on in the past. But uh, again, quite honestly, you know, those are all good. But when it comes down to making music and not having to mess with anything else, I go back to Ableton. Uh, you know, Linux is really cool and I have a lot of fun with it. And I have recorded several albums on it, but just for unlimited creative flow, Again, I go back to Ableton because I'm not messing around with trying to fix things or getting things to work or anything like that. It just works, you know, and it works really, really well. So that's why I always, you know, when I'm really serious and I want to get things done, Ableton. All right, so hopefully this was at least a little bit educational. I know it wasn't like some really detailed tutorial, but I wanted to just clear up some of the things and some of the questions that I get a lot about recording the Nitro Mesh and just hopefully that cleared up some of the confusion that you guys might be having about MIDI and you know audio recording and, and things like that. Every time I go to record a video, some giant truck drives by outside or somebody's blowing a horn or they're doing something. Oh, and by the way, you might have noticed my t-shirt. Uh, these are for sale. You can see down the links down below. Uh, I do have merch now and uh, it doesn't say demonic sweaters anywhere on here. It actually says later that day. And this is the shirt, I, a t-shirt I designed. I actually took this photo uh, when I was in Tampa, Florida, uh, using my Mavica FD7 floppy drive camera. So if you're interested in any of the merch, I have some other ones. Check that link out down below. And again, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for all the recent subscribers. And I uh, hope you guys are all staying safe out there and enjoying making some music. And uh, I look forward to uh, doing more videos for you guys. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you all really soon.